Hello and good morning, fifth graders. Welcome back to another computer science class. I'm really happy to have you all back again. I hope that you're doing well at home and learning a lot. Today, we're going to keep on working in our project encode.org. This is an opportunity for us to showcase all that knowledge that we have gained during these last few months. So the first step that we're going to take, as you know, is that we're going to click on our, on our web browser. You probably are using Google Chrome or Safari, whether you're using Windows or a Mac computer. Now, when you get this window, you're going to type in code.org and you're going to click on enter. When you do that, let's see how fast we can get our screen right there. There you are. You're going to click on the first link. Dun, 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 dun. So we have it. Right on the upper right corner, we're going to click on sign in. And finally, we got it. Right? So we're going to type in our section code. I don't know if you actually remember it, but I will blow your session code, password, and username in the platform, actually in the portal. So you can take a look at your username in case that you don't forget any actually of these three. So we're going to try with a session code from a fourth grade class, and you're going to click on go. You don't need to use, obviously, this session code. That's for me to illustrate you. But you already know pretty much how to log in. So we're going to click on our name, your name, and then you're going to select your password in the form of a picture. Afterwards, you will see your name right here. If it is not right there, make sure that you sign in properly because then whatever project you work on will be lost because you haven't signed in and then I won't be able to see your progress. So when you do that, you're going to click on or actually you're able to see all the material that we have covered so far and all those lessons that were still missing. I want you to scroll all the way down onto lesson 20, which is the end of course project. Right there you will find on the first uh, button a few examples. We have two options to try. We have the Sprite Lab and we have the Artist um, workspace. You may try either of these two. I will try the first one first. So right here we have two examples on two different games that we can try in our project. You are not copying or actually replicating this same project, but I want, I want to take a look at the way they use the different models that we have learned about so far. So let's click on the, the one with the airplane, see what it does. Coming up, it's on its way. Oh yeah, this is taking longer than usual. All right, I think that we could have some coffee meanwhile. Okay, we finally got it. So let's see. As you can see right here, every block that is right inside, we have seen it before, right? So let's go step by step. We have a background color in the back, as blue as you see here. We have a new sprite, which is our the clouds right here. And we specify a random location. That means that every time that we play our game, this cloud will be moving randomly in different places. All right, so we created our sprite, but I'm repeating the same pattern three times. You see right there with our loop button, the pink one. Then I have my cloud sprite again. Then I have a moving west and wrapping. That means, or actually that will make us feel that we're moving when we displace our airplane in this background. 
But let's see what else do we have. We do have, and right here we have a coin, right? This is another type of a sprite. And we also have our coin in random location. So that means that we need to chase the coins for us to get it. Right here we have a size set to 50% bigger whenever we click on it. Since we're moving from east to west, yet again right here we have this behavior block moving west and wrapping. Finally we have our airplane, which is another sprite, and then we specify the position that we're trying. Right? So we have this behavior block or actually this event. This will only happen right here when the airplane touches the coin. What oh, this wouldn't stop moving. Right? So whenever the airplane touches the coin, then we're grabbing or oh, then the, the actually the airplane will start shaking. I can see that my airplane will also change its color and the positions of my coins will also change. But well, let's take a look at this. How will I control the navigation of my airplane? All right? So while I press down, I want to move my airplane 10 pixels south. That means that it's moving downwards. Then when I press up, my airplane will move 10 pixels again north this time, right? So when, another condition, my airplane touches the clouds, then I have my sprite shaking with this behavior right here. So let's see what it actually does. So I will click on run. I can move up and down. I can use this arrow right here, but I'd rather to use the ones on the keyboard. I got a coin right there, it changed the color. You will see that whenever I reach a cloud, it starts shaking even more. So it looks pretty cool and you can see that the code behind it is not, let's say that tough. And we actually get to use every button that we have seen this far. Let's see if we had the chance to take another look at the one on the left. <coughs> I already know that some of you already began working on your own idea. I really liked some of them, and I think that on this time we can actually take some extra time at home and polish our work. So let's take a look at the one on the left. While this slows up, I want to show you another um, platform, or let's say app, that we can try. This one is called Grasshopper. You can download this to your tablets, iPads, or even try it here in the website. So basically, we're having the same JavaScript that we're learning in code.org and in code combat. So if you want to chill a bit, you might probably try this. We're still learning programming, actually, web development. And I tried I tried it this morning, actually, and I really liked it. So you may try it as well. All right, so let's take a look at the code that we have behind. behind um, this game in this case. So we set a background. So we're setting the tone right there. So uh, let's see if we can actually. Yeah, no, we can't. So we just have sort of a park right here. And then we have three different bees, right? Set at a random location, the same way that we tried, or that we actually saw uh, with the clouds before. We're having with the bee bees in this case. Then we have the size of the bead, the bees, set to 50%. And then we have the behavior, which will be wandering. And that means that they will be moving around, right? 
So right here I have the chance, or I see that they created another sprite. And then right here I have another sprite. This case will be Cupcake. And it actually is 75%, actually 25% bigger than the P that we have. Right here we have some conditionals that you can see, some events, right? So when I click on this, so when this character sprite touches this one right here, the cup K will jump to another location. Right here, when this guy over here, let's say, I don't know, whatever name you want to call it, um, touches any V, then we're going to jump to our uh, beginning at, that we had at the beginning. To the position that we had at the beginning, let's see. Yes, right here. You can see that it's only, only changes by one right here on the edge axis. So basically, it's the same position. So basically, right there, our, goal, our game will be reset. So we have more events right here. When I press up, down, left, and right. So basically, when I press up, it will move north. When I press down, south, left, west, and then right, east. I think that this is even simpler than the one that we saw before. But anyway, we get to actually apply every uh, block that we have seen before. If we take a look at the code that we have behind, we still can see the JavaScript that is behind of it. On the app that I just told you, uh, Press Hopper, you have the opportunity to um, code like this, actually typing. The different commands that we want to try. But just for the time being, we're going to try right here in code at all. When I click on run, let's see if I, if I can actually reach the cup. Okay, right, 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 right. Probably it's moving slower because of the connection pretty far. Right, I can see that it actually worked because the code says that whenever I reach the cup, okay. Is going to move to another location. So let's try reaching a B. And if I reach it, as I see right here, it moved to the original position. So it basically works. So what I want you to try is to make your own game. It would be nice if you actually write down the step that you actually took to to come up with your project. For example, I'm, my game will be about this about this and I will use this and this block and then you can actually try it out in our workspace. Remember that, we're, that I will be taking a look at this so I can actually provide you with feedback. If you have any question, don't doubt and actually let me know about it. Um, what else? Now it's time for you to rock it. So, I'm really excited and eager to see the projects that you can come up with. Later on, we show you another app that I just found out that is really cool. Well, let's close out this run right here. And this is your time to show up. So it was a pleasure to see you again, to actually share this moment with you again. And I hope to see you soon. Stay safe and get to work. Bye-bye.